for us in Get a Life, the most important thing is for people to become aware that obesity is a problem and Mississippi has the highest rate of childhood obesity, the highest rate of adult obesity. And uh, obese children have a far greater chance of becoming obese adults than do normal weight children. So if we can keep children from ever having a problem, then they never have to go through and try to cure the problem. What we've essentially set out to do is to change the culture of our area. So much of our culture, I mean, we'll fry anything in Mississippi. Well, guess what? It tastes good, but it's not good for you. In, in Quitman County, they say they have a no-fry zone. No fried foods in Quitman County, which is quite a change. We have a no fast food zone at our school. We do not allow any fast food into our building. We do not use candy as a reward at our school. If we can teach our children what's right and what we need to eat to be healthier, they go home and tell their parents. When they go to the grocery store, the parents will say, you know, we're gonna get this, and the child will say, oh, no, ma'am, we have to get this. Miss Souter said that's not healthy. We need to get this. Let's read the label. And you've got the kids being good role models for a healthier generation. We put in uh, five walking tracks at school. We encourage parents to come to, them, uh, come, come to those schools and walk. Also, we have 12 uh, Project Fits, which is outside gyms, if you will, that improves uh, upper body strength, uh, also improves cardiovascular. Uh, all this was done through a grant. To some people, it would just like, look like regular playground equipment, but it's not. It's to measure upper body strength and endurance, and you have to be trained on that. Our PE teachers train, she trains our staff. They are allowed to take their children out there anytime they want to during the day and um, do a lesson on Project Fit. I believe a healthier child will do better academically. When Johnny or Susie goes home and says, Mama, don't eat that, that's not healthy. Mama, we don't want to stop at this restaurant because that's not healthy food. Mama, we need to go walking. Mama, we need to exercise. And where did you learn this? I learned this at school. One of the resources that we, we brought uh, to the Head Start programs was a national program called I'm Moving, I'm Learning. Uh, every child has a vegetable and put it in a big stew pot, walk around it and stir it and sing, have a good time. But they're also moving, they're also learning about nutrition, learning to appreciate vegetables. They sing the song about stir the soup and then they have different uh, vegetables and fruits in their hands and then they go by the color and if you have the red tomato you throw it into the parachute. If you have the yellow bananas you throw it in there and then all of we start then we start stir the soup, stir the soup. When I go into the classroom, I like to see children involved. I want to see them up moving around. I want to see the teacher up moving around. And when our children are happy, I am ecstatic. <laughs> we also looked at after school programs like boys and girls clubs, the dance dance revolution uh, machines. You have the kids standing in line to, to dance on that uh, and they compete with each other. So they're learning that being active uh, can be fun. Judy Blue, the regional director, came into my club one day. We did BMIs on our children and we found that more than 95% of our children were overweight. And so when she walked into my club that day and was like, hey, I have a dance revolution. Would you like to use this? I was like, yes, yes, and yes. How much exercise total, total do you think you do in three hours doing this? Oh, a lot. Cause I be like really tired and I be sweating. Tired now? Yes, sir. <laughs> so you see this pad, it's just like if you go into an arcade and you put a quarter in there and you see the um, arrows and it's telling the kids where to step. And there's all different types of songs. They love to sing, they love to dance. So they're doing it like a dance and they're listening to the song. So it was a great component. The kids love it, they still love it. And um, I got on it a couple of times, but I couldn't hang <laughs> with the children, but they absolutely love it. We had two ladies at a, a, a rural church, and uh, their pastor started preaching about health. And they got very interested in that, and they could change their lives. Uh, they lost weight, they got healthier, and they helped start a dozen health ministries in other churches. In our congregations locally, 
we were concerned about the general health and welfare of our churches. I go to churches and I tell them that I have a walking track around my church. And some of them have been to my church and all they see is a parking lot. I said, well, if you have a parking lot that's paved in lights, you have a walking track. The uh, deacons or some of the men would go around and measure it so they know doing so many laps how much they've actually done. We go to the churches now and they're talking, that you don't have to press it upon it, it's just not having the conversation about how we can eat better and how we can do things. And then from that, we expect to see healthier kids. I think any community has a wide range of people who are interested in the future of their children. If they can just organize themselves into a community health council, they're all kind of national resources. That's not a problem. The problem is just getting organized and the will to make a difference in our children's lives. And yes, it can be replicated. People say, I see us Head Start children stand out. We know who they are. They are different from the ones who came from other programs. And then other programs will hear that and they say, well, let's see if we can't use this same kind of model so we can get the same kind of recognition for our children. We have to educate the public how important it is to eat healthy, how important it is to exercise. Mississippi leads the nation in obese children, which leads to about five other diseases. We, if, we, if we educate our children, then our children in 10 years, they'll be healthier and they'll raise their children healthy and they'll raise their children healthier. There are very few times in a person's life where you can actually affect people's health or, or actually possibly save lives. And, and in this position, we've been given that opportunity. And if we can add years to their lives with some of these initiatives and through education and putting in the, the hard surfaces to, so the kids can get out and play, that's, that's just very rewarding for myself and for everybody in our town.